Well, I'm Johanna Pothig, and um, I have lived in the Bay Area since um, 1980. And um, originally, I grew up in the Philippines, and I um, started doing public artworks really in a relationship to that community in the South of Market, in downtown uh, San Francisco. Um, and uh, lived in the Haight, but also worked uh, for many years at the South of Market Cultural Center, which is a great artifact of an institution and a neighborhood art center uh, in the South of Market. And did a lot of um, connecting to the different communities uh, in the Bay Area, but also I've done work in LA and Chicago and across the country and, and other places, but rooted here. I even wrote this book, Wall Stories, about it uh, because the experience of working closely with community or just uh, people in a neighborhood or um, institutions, uh, neighborhood, other artists, um, fabricators, are all part of creating public pieces. Like there's all these webs of relationships that I've been, you know, building or connecting to. You know, there's a lot of different kinds of street art, but murals and muralism as a kind of art movement and art form is a, a kind of public painting, which is telling stories. You know, it, it, it's more about telling stories yeah, about the site, which is something that I have translated not just in, in paint, but also other materials. As a, my approach is like, what are the stories here to tell? You yeah, know, if, about... If we'll get into that a little yeah. bit, because I think you're, you're doing that with the piece that we're working on right now. Exactly. But um, yeah, I just, you know, also, just to stay on the mural thing for a moment, um, you know, I. I think that you know it's it's probably safe to say that you were you were one of few women who were working in large murals in San Francisco at that time as that's, well. That's quite true. <laughs> I mean, I think the first mural I painted was nine was nine uh, stories high. It's this one here, you know, and we were getting out there on big scaffolding and and you know, really honestly, I'm a young woman. I'm getting into the art world. I like to paint big. Yeah. What are my options? I'm living in a small rent control apartment in the Haight. I don't have a big studio. I don't have, I, you know, women in the art world, we, were, we had a lot of struggle to, to get resources, to get the things you need to. So, so not, just did, not only did I want to do public art because I believe that as a, a, a member of the urban, in my society, that I, I have voice in terms of what my environment looks like. It shouldn't just be, corporate decisions about advertising and billboards and you know selling selling you that we should have other kinds of visual imagery in our society that tells us who's living here yeah. who's here what's the history here or what's important to us so starting to do murals was a way for me number one as a painter to paint big because I like to paint big <laughs> you know and also to do this content driven uh, concept driven kind of work. You know, one of my exciting, you know, fa factors of one having hand is to to be an atelier, to work with artists, to help them, you know, uh, with to broaden their potential, yeah. to expand their horizons, or open up new materials, new methods, to go bigger. If you can say what the name of this piece is, and just say, yeah, so, so talk about the piece that we're working on together, and you know, what is the name of the artwork, and what is the inspiration origin for it. So the name of the artwork is Resilient City. And um, I love to title things, and I didn't know what the title of this was until I finally really understood what was important to the fire department and the emergency operations and the public art program in the city of San Jose. They want this place where they're gonna train people and, and deal with emergencies to build a more resilient city so that when emergencies and fires and floods and everything come, they are working together in concert to protect people and to protect the city. You know? And uh, I learned about you know, mitigation and preparation and um, uh, you know, the, the, the ways in which we as individuals 
can um, prepare for emergencies and the ways that these uh, uh, you know, institutions or these ser services uh, help us. So that, that finally, when I created the design and I put the city on the top, you know, and the rays coming out, so that it's hopeful. I mean, ultimately, you've got the rubble at the bottom, which is the, and the, the fire. But as you move person. upward, it becomes optimistic. But as you optimistic, move upward, yeah. it becomes optimistic, you know? So you're coming from the things falling apart to the figures which represent the workers, basically, who of emergency and fire, who are saving our lives and who are trained to help respond, you know? We're expected to help mitigate, but they're gonna be the responders. Right. And then the design, um, so it comes from this rubble and then it comes together in this pattern, which is quite beautiful. And then it becomes the background for the city. And the city, which has in the, in the landscape of that city has some important sites of San Jose, those are specific to San Jose, the oldest adobe house, Cesar Chavez's house, you know, an Eichler, a classic, you know, uh, so it has symbols within the city and other recognizable architecture from downtown San Jose, so that you know that's San Jose, because that's one thing interesting, the, uh, the fire uh, chief was like, it's San Jose. I mean, that's their city. Sure, this is sure. the San Jose yeah. Fire Department. San Jose, like any other city. Yeah, it has to be like San Jose. San Jose's. Yeah. Uh, and so that it was important that it was part of the design in that kind of detail. Yeah, having seen it in the shop and, and seeing it all laid out and all the colors completed, knowing that we're going to install this next week, um, do you feel as though it's it's ter it, it's met your expectations? Did, does it look as though you intended? Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty, I think it's very key to uh, public art and design processes to understand how your digital or your, your, your small design starts to get translated. Right. And I think that takes experience on both the part of the artist and the fabricator and the city person who knows, like someone like Lynn knows, look, I get it, you know what I mean? And it's, it's more something you have to explain to people who don't know that this is gonna go through its phases and as it progresses. But it, you know, look, you know, you've done your job, you know, you've, you've checked out your samples and your, you know, your smaller versions and your, you know, so that when you, so it's not like, oh, this looks, this doesn't look at all like what I intended it to look like. <laughs> right. It's actually like, oh, yeah. This is what we were going for. Because of the right. time it takes to do it and all right. of the, the, the processes involved, right. there's no surprise. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. I mean, the big surprise will be when it gets on the wall, yeah. just because yeah. finally it's physically yeah. in its, where it intended, where, what it was yeah. designed for. And that's very excited to, to see well, that happen. Let's let's get out there and do it. Let's do it. And I'll, yeah. I'll see you out there <laughs> next week. Yes, uh, exactly. We're gonna, we're gonna get this up on the wall. So. Fabulous. Uh, Johanna, thank you for thank chatting you. with me. And um, yeah, super exciting. Yeah. Pleasure.